All right, everybody, stick around because this video is going to be full of tips to get you up and running with your CNC this year in no time. So do you want to start your CNC journey this year or expand it into more of a business? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. Today, I'm going to walk you through what you need to know in order to start that CNC journey, whether it's as a hobbyist or it making it into a successful small business. We're going to talk about equipment, startup costs, skills that you'll need, additional tools and expenses that may come up, and how to take your idea from a concept to a finished product. Hi, I'm Damien with Southpaw Designs, and over the past two and a half years, I've built this little garage into a pretty lucrative side business, largely centered around my Onefinity CNC. In fact, I'm strongly considering uh, retirement in the next couple of years and going full-time as a woodworker and content creator. I'll place links in the description below and in the pinned comment uh, to show some of the equipment that we're going to be uh, mentioning in case you'd like to check it out. First of all, when getting started with CNC, you need to decide what your primary goal is going to be. Is it purely for fun, um, a side hustle, small business, or are you interested in world domination? Why is this important? Because depending on your goals, you may have different needs. If you're just wanting to have fun and make some cool stuff, then you may want to look at a cheaper desktop CNC, such as a small Jinmitsu, or possibly even just a laser cutter or laser engraver. I've got a couple of reviews to some entry-level CNCs and layer cutters that I've done in the past, and I'll link them into the description if you'd like to check those out. Now, the majority of this video is gonna focus on CNC's, but I do want to take a moment and mention laser cutters and engravers, which can be a very important tool in your shop. You can start out with an entry-level laser engraver such as an Ofero or a longer laser for under $200, but my choice for a great entry-level laser is an Xtool D1 Pro. Uh, Xtool sent it to me a little over a year ago to do a review on it, and even though I get contacted to do laser videos all the time, this has been the one that I've kept for my daily use. My only criticism about laser engravers or cutters like these is that many of these entry-level ones are open gantry. So if you accidentally look at it without eye protection or somebody else walks in, you can seriously damage your eyes, so keep that in mind. Now you can buy covers for laser cutters, and I strongly recommend it if you're gonna go with a model like this. In fact, I bought a cheap one with a built-in fan, but unfortunately my cat likes to use it as a hammock, so here's where we currently are with it. Now, that's enough about lasers because it's really not my specialty. Uh, for entry-level CNC's, such as a Jinmitsu, you can find models for under $500, but keep in mind that you're gonna be limited in the size and types of projects that you can create. In my opinion, due to the lower power and smaller size, these models are better for engraving and inlays, uh, but you can cut some small projects on them as well. If you're interested in more of a side hustle or a small business, then you might want to consider getting a larger, more robust CNC. Hobbyist machines in this range could include uh, Shapecos, X-Carves, or if you're like me, a Onefinity. Now, I'm in no way affiliated with Onefinity, uh, but I love this machine and I even upgraded it to the Elite a couple of years ago. Uh, my CNC of choice is the Onefinity Elite Woodworker, uh, which has a cutting bed of 32 by 32 inches. Uh, the base model costs about $3,300 for this model, which is on the high side for a hobbyist machine. But Onefinity has an excellent reputation, and for almost three years with it, I'm more than happy. Now, one note about the 32 by 32 model is that you can upgrade the X-Rail to 48 inches if you decide you need the larger cutting area. So that's nice to know that it is scalable. Now, for those of you who already have a CNC, I'd love for you to comment below telling uh, the audience what type of a CNC you have and what your experience has been with it. That way, those folks uh, watching the video can get some feedback from a very wide audience. Now, if you're looking for a large CNC, able to handle four by eight sheets or even larger, now you may want to look in brands such as Avid or Laguna. Uh, and these can be priced anywhere from $10,000 to $25,000 or even more. 
Now these are for folks uh, interested in mass production, large sign de design, or even large projects. Now I don't have much experience with those larger CNC's, so I'll leave that to the experts in that area, and I won't comment on that anymore. Okay, so once you have decided on your CNC of choice, uh, let's talk about the design side of things. What types of skills or knowledge do you need to get started? Well, first of all, make sure that you subscribe to this channel because I put out new videos all the time showing you how to work better, giving you project ideas, reviewing the best and worst tools and accessories, and teaching you how to get better results with your CNC. But after that shameless plug, uh, let's talk about the main skill that you're going to need, um, which may be a stretch for some woodworkers, especially older ones, who may not be as technologically savvy with a computer. And uh, the ability to use a computer and understand how to use it is something that is you're going to need. Uh, because whether you're creating your own projects from scratch or downloading projects created by other designers, you still need to use a computer to fully bring your ideas to life. Once you've decided on your CNC of choice, you'll need to choose the design software of choice. Now there are many choices out there, um, with some of the most popular being Carbide Create, Easel, VCarve Pro, Fusion 360. I've never used Carbide Create, which is included with the Nomad and Shapeco CNCs, I believe, but from what I understand, you can use it with any CNC. Uh, and the important thing to remember is that most design software is pretty universal for any CNC, but I'll come back to that topic and talk a little bit more about that in just a couple of minutes. Uh, one of my first videos that I made a little over two years ago uh, was an in-depth review of Easel, VCarve Pro, and Fusion 360. I'll link it below if you'd like to check it out. Now, if you do choose to watch it, keep in mind that I'd only been working with the CNC for a few months at that point. So while it's useful, I've come a long way since then, uh, and I'll probably refilm that with the new knowledge that I've earned over the course of the past two years. Uh, but to summarize those three types of software, here goes. Easel, it's great for entry-level software, and you can do some great things with it, but I found it limiting. Uh, one great thing about Easel, though, is that it does have a fully functional free version, but of course you get more features with the premium version. Uh, it only has an online platform, so if your internet goes down or their website goes down, you have no access. On the upper end, you have Fusion 360. I'm a high school computer science teacher, so I'm pretty computer savvy and was able to use it with no problem. But for those with limited computer skills, you may find that it has a pretty high learning curve. Now, Fusion does have a free version, but for professionals, it requires an annual subscription of like up to $500 or more, depending on how you pay. But while Easel is an online platform, Fusion is installed on your computer. Now the advantage to using something like Easel that's purely online is you can use it with even something as simple as a Chromebook, whereas Fusion 360 and VCarve Pro are going to require a standalone PC or laptop. And if we're using the Goldilocks and Three Bears analogy, I find Vectrix VCarve Pro to be just right. It's relatively easy to use, has a wealth of resources to learn how to use it, and it's relatively affordable. There are different versions available. VCarve Desktop costs about $349, but has some limited features and only allows a 24 by 24 workspace. VCarve Pro, which is what I use and what we'll look at in just a moment, is the unlimited version and has a cost as of right now of $699. Uh, there's also Cut 2D, which I haven't used, but it seems to be a streamlined version for engraving and smaller projects, and a full 3D software called Aspire. But but I don't have enough 3D business to justify spending $2,000 for it. Next, you'll need to decide whether you want to use a palm router or a spindle. When you're shopping around, be sure to check whether your CNC of choice comes with a spindle or router because many of them, like the Onefinity, doesn't. Now, Onefinity recommends a Makita palm router and actually just recently began selling their own model of spindles, but realistically, palm routers or trim routers really aren't designed to be run for hours, which you may do with your CNC. Your other choice is a spindle. As I previously mentioned, Onefinity recently started selling their own brand of CNC spindle, but I use the Pwn CNC air-cooled system that you see right here. 
I also use the variable frequency drive, which simply put, reads the G code for the spindle speed and other settings and automatically starts and stops when you start your project. Now, I'm not employed by Pwn, but I do have an affiliate relationship with them and I've had very good results with their products. So if you're interested in checking out Pwn CNC, there is an affiliate link and discount code in the description. Okay, so next, once you have your CNC and design software up and running, what else will you need to get rolling? Here are a few tools and pieces of equipment that you'll need to consider. Number one, dust collection. A CNC puts out quite a bit of sawdust, so you'll need at least a shop vac connected to a dust boot. Uh, I've been using this method for almost three years and it's worked fine. I have my shop vac on rollers with a cyclone separator so that I can move it around my shop, but I recently upgraded to a small wind dust collector and will be using some PVC to make a small system connected to my largest sawdust makers. Next, you'll need some starter bits. The most common collet size for these types of machines is a quarter inch collet, so that's what I typically use. Now, I recommend that you have at least an upcut bit for creating profiles and pockets, a downcut bit for finishing out those pockets, uh, a, a couple of uh, V bits, 60 degrees and 45 degrees, maybe even a 90 degree for engraving, and a bowl bit for making rounded pockets. Others to consider could be surfacing bits, roundovers, and keyhole bits. Hell, there's almost too many to list uh, depending on your needs. Now, while many people just eyeball the XYZ location of their workpiece, I recommend using a touch probe to find the bottom left-hand corner of the piece. If your power goes out during a job, losing the zero position, it can be difficult to reset it to the exact same spot. And a touch probe really helps to reset at that exact zero location and to find the exact starting point of your workpiece. Now, one other thing to consider is how you're going to hold your material to your spoil board. Bench dogs, hold down clamps are very common methods. Personally, if you're gonna use a hold down clamp, I recommend that you make your own out of wood because if you accidentally run over it with your router bit, there's less of a likelihood of damaging your bit. I used to use the old tape and glue method, and I still do use it from time to time, but I actually prefer to simply screw my material into my spoil board. Sure, you will wear out your spoil board quicker, but it's called a spoil board or waste board for a reason. But that's just my preference. All right, so now that you've got everything set up, you're ready to go. Now I'll give you a quick overview of making your first project. I'm not going to go over the ins and outs of how to make a project, but I will walk you through the basic steps. Also, just in case you didn't know, you can find files online that you can download in case you don't yet have the skills to make your own. You can find them all over Etsy. You can download them from other designers. You can look up groups uh, on Facebook like CNC Entrepreneurs. Uh, there are also several content creators such as Hamilton Dilbeck, Two Moose Design, Andy Bird, Garrett Fr Frommy. I think it's pronounced, he pronounces it Frommy, but I don't think he knows how to pronounce his name. Um, so Garrett Frome uh, with IDC Woodcraft that are a great resource uh, to download files or to watch them to improve your skills. And of course, I'd encourage you to check out my website at Southpaw Designs, spelled incorrectly on purpose, linked below where you can find some free and inexpensive design files of some of my most popular builds. But let's take a quick moment to go through the basic process to design your own project. Now, my software of choice, as I've already mentioned, is Vectrix VCarve Pro. You'll design your project on what's called the CAD side. CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. Once you have the design complete, you'll move over to the CAM side or Computer Aided Manufacturing to set your tool paths. That's a pretty in-depth process and too much for this video, but the most common tool paths that I'll use are profiles, pockets, inlays, and engravings. If you'd like to see a detailed video uh, explaining how to create a simple project from start to finish, uh, then leave a comment down below and let me know. I'd be glad to make one. Now, once your toolpaths are set, you'll generate what's called G-code, which are the actual toolpath commands that your CNC will follow. This is why most design software is universal, because the software simply generates the G-code. Now, that may not be a universal with every single type of software 100% of the time, but it is true of most of the design softwares that I've used. 
Uh, you can even write your own G-code if you want to, but dear Lord, that's like digging a swimming pool with a shovel. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and do it, go right ahead. Now, depending on the CNC that you choose, it may be connected to your computer, either hardwired or by Wi-Fi. Now, I think my Onefinity actually has Wi-Fi to it, but honestly, I'm a 50-year-old man and I'm stuck in my ways. From there, I'm just gonna plug in my jump drive and use my touch probe to find the XYZ and go. Now, once we're finished, then you'll just need to decide what you'd like to do with your finished work. And that's really an entire video on its own, so I won't go into the details there, but you may need to sand, stain, finish, or assemble your project depending on what you're doing. Some of my favorite finishes, especially for hardwood like walnut and maple, are mineral oils and Odie's oil. And there you go. Now, I have to apologize for not going into a deeper dive on many of these topics because realistically, each of these tools could be its own video or even series of videos to fully describe everything, but I hope that I've helped you to get started. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or follow and message me on Facebook uh, because I love being a resource for you all. And if you'd like to see some of my coolest projects of the past year, check out this video. I guess it's going to be right here.